organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on tonight's edition of Daily Island TV, it's been 10 years since a horrific storm destroyed millions of homes in New Orleans. Find out how some of the residents are doing now. And the new Dean of Students is at the university. Who is she? Stay tuned. We're six days out from the opening of the Hawkeye football season. And we break down the defense coming up. All that and more coming up. This is Daily Island TV. For joining us, I'm Kelsey Sanger. And I'm Brianna Jett. The North Liberty man charged in killing a woman at the Coral Ridge Mall will be tried in Story County. Alexander Kozak is facing first degree murder charges after allegedly killing Andrea Farrington on June 12th. Kozak's attorney requested that the trial be moved out of the area because of the high publicity following the shooting. The prosecution did not oppose the change in location. The trial is currently set for April 12, 2016. One presidential candidate was in Iowa City Sunday afternoon. Democratic candidate Martin O'Malley visited the mill in downtown Iowa City to share his views and rally voters. Many people came out to hear the candidate and to share their support from all across Johnson County. O'Malley is currently lagging in the polls and has been looking to Iowa to boost his numbers. A few other Democratic candidates are creating news in the polls. Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton is losing ground here in Iowa to competitor Bernie Sanders. Sanders has been slowly cutting into Clinton's lead and is now only seven points behind. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, Republican candidate Donald Trump is still maintaining a strong lead in Iowa with 23 percent from Republican voters. However, one other candidate might give Trump a run for his money. Dr. Ben Carson is slowly rising in the polls and is currently second with 18 percent among Iowa voters. Continuing with the election, many Iowans are talking about another Democrat, but this one isn't running for president, not yet at least. Vice President Joe Biden has a very strong support system in Iowa waiting for him if he decides to run. According to the Des Moines Register Bloomberg poll, politics poll, 14% of Democratic Iowa voters say that their first choice for president is Biden. Lynn Reddington has been named the new Dean of Students for the University of Iowa. Reddington has shared her excitement about becoming a part of the university and she looks forward to creating change here on campus. Reddington was the Director of Residence Life and Interim Dean of Students at the University of Northern Iowa. I hope to learn about the, the campus culture, about the, um, the university, about the students. I'd really like to, to consider and, and think about what we're doing and why we're doing them. Reddington began working at the UI on August 19th. It's been 10 years since Hurricane Katrina devastated the New Orleans area, causing billions of dollars in damage and destroying many people's homes. Daily Iowan TV's Megan Sanchez went out to see how a small town in Iowa was able to give one couple a fresh start after the disaster. <laughs> Here to the streets of small town Iowa that Augusta restaurant has brought just a touch of New Orleans. Owners Ben and Jerry Halprin opened their restaurant back in 2008 after leaving New Orleans due to Hurricane Katrina. Where we had lived it was just all underwater. You could see the water lines up the trees and the houses and there were boats in the middle of the road. With what little they could salvage, the couple headed back to the Midwest where they had family to start a new life. And we heard word about Oxford and that there was a little restaurant and you know, an old, older building that was very reasonable. So we packed up and came out and started this. And the restaurant provides an all-American menu with burgers and steaks, but brings a New Orleans vibe with traditional dishes like po' boy sandwiches and red beans and rice. I make everything in-house, so I do everything from scratch, all the bread and mayonnaise and all the sauces and dressings. Though the Halperin's home in New Orleans was completely flooded, they consider themselves fortunate. Our story is kind of a good story. So you have to land up here and you have our own restaurant and things are going well. Um, a lot of people had a lot worse than we did. Although Iowa is their home now, Jerry says New Orleans and Katrina are still a part of her. It lives within me. 
That city is one city that lives in you. Ten years later, we need to keep caring and keep it going on, and it is one of the most important cities in America, and beautiful and different and free. Reporting in Oxford, Iowa, this is Megan Sanchez, Daily Iowan TV. Augusta was closed this weekend while they were serving up some grub at Iowa City's Soul Fest, but will open back up this Wednesday night at 5 p.m. for dinner. Well, Kelsey, we are a week away from this year's first football game, and I'm hoping the weather will hold. Me too, Brianna. Let's toss it over to Casey Lindekratz in the weather studio to see what the next week has in store. Casey? Thanks, guys. While the past week may have offered a taste of fall, I regret to say that for the start of the second week of classes, temperatures are on the rise. Monday morning is looking to start out in the upper 60s with clear skies, and by noon, it's going to be around 82 and sunny. After hitting a high of 87, temperatures are going to drop to 80 degrees for the evening. Looking forward to Tuesday, temperatures are going to rise slightly, but the trade-off is clear skies. Wednesday and Thursday look to provide much of the same with highs in the low 90s yet again. To round out the week, Friday is going to be around the same with cloudy skies, while Saturday will cool off slightly. Well, it looks like summer is trying to make a comeback in this month before fall officially starts. But for now, that's all I have in the weather studio. Back to you guys at the desk. Stormy skies didn't keep people away from this year's Soul Fest. I was there and got the whole recap. Check it out. While the dancers stole most of the attention of festival goers, the street festival also featured food venues and a fun zone. It was a rainy and dreary weekend, but many still made it out to walk through the venues. And with that positivity in mind, all of the performers and venues put their best foot forward. Approached about five years ago from Diversity Focus out of Cedar Rapids, and they wanted to have a festival that really celebrates the positive influence of the African American culture because there had been so much negativity around that. While the dancers stole most of the attention of festival goers, the street festival also featured food venues and a fun zone. It was a rainy and dreary weekend, but many still made it out to walk through the venues. It's really just um, celebrating the positive influence of the African American culture. And with that positivity in mind, all of the performers and venues put their best foot forward to show the community what the African culture is all about. Full fest, and we're just having a wonderful, wonderful time. We visit while we walk. We get exposed to new ideas. This was the third year the Soul Fest was hosted by the Summer of the Arts and Diversity Focus. Johnson County has taken the first step in increasing the minimum wage here in Iowa. Thursday, the Johnson County Board of Supervisors unanimously approved the possibility of increasing the minimum wage by a dollar on November 1st. If the other steps are approved, the minimum wage will rise and reach over $10 by January 2017. The Iowa Department of Transportation is creating a way for residents to be able to have their IDs on their cell phones. It is an app developed by Morpho Trust USA. The technology will cost the state $50,000 and will automatically update any changes that are made on the ID. The program will only be available to Apple users at first, but the DOT is planning to expand the program. The app will be coming up within the next two years. Two years is hardly any time at all. Before we know it, we'll be using our cell phones for everything. I agree. But you know what else is right around the corner, Kelsey? Football season. That's right. This upcoming fall season is jam-packed with Hawkeye sports. Let's hand it over to Kate and Ashlyn in the sports studio to catch us up. Ladies? Thanks, Brianna and Kelsey. Volleyball and field hockey started their season strong over the weekend. We'll update you on all their performances later in the show. But first, we continue our football talk. Last week, we went through every offensive position, and it would only make sense to go through the defense this week. Daily Iowan TV football reporter Taylor Brooks looks at the Iowa defense as a whole and how experience is, is on their side. Going into a new football season means everyone wants to do one thing, and that's win this. Big Ten Championship. And with a defense like Iowa's, this could be possible. One thing this unit brings to the table is depth, which is something Iowa lacks. The confidence of our kids and the communication and, and between each other and mm -hmm. coaching each other and being competitive with each other and, and the competition has really been good. So in that, in that standpoint, I really think that we're coming closer as a defense chemistry-wise. The defensive line suffers two things, though. The missing spots of Carl Davis and Louis Trinka-Passat. 
But those two now NFL players were what younger players could look up to. Well, the good news is I think we have good players that are working hard to uh, try to follow those players, follow in their footsteps, they're progressing. Drew Ott is the undoubtful headman of this defensive line. Drew's a man of tremendous character, but he is a character, I gotta tell you, and it's, uh, he's just a lot of fun to work with. Uh, He's a great story. Since he's become a starter 2013 last year, he's, he's played extremely well. While the secondary behind these linemen are ready to do their duties. You know, we like to go out there and win every play and win every day. So that's our objective each and every single practice. Now, Greg Maven is a part of a group that returns three starters with Desmond King in the corner and Jordan Lomax at free safety. We're probably the most experienced like group of the defensive back. So definitely we have to up our play and like we have to really make plays this year and then just keep continue to get better. The trio ranked in the top eight of the team's tacklers in 2014 and combined for five interceptions. But simply put, they still need to play better. And we have experience back there and that, that's a, certainly a positive, but we have to play better. Uh, you know, we gave up too many big plays and it's not just a secondary, it's a team thing. Now for linebackers, Iowa also returns Bo Bauer a strength on the outside for Iowa last year, but he proved his worth and is now starting on the inside with more responsibility. In Bo's case, uh, we felt like he played well last year, thought he had a chance to take another step and uh, be even more productive at the will position for us. The cards lie in Iowa's favor on the defensive end with experience and overall mobility, but they can't do it all for this Hawkeye team. This has been Taylor Brooks for Daily Iowan TV Sports. On Monday's show, we step further into the eyes of Iowa's secondary. Taking it to the court with Bon Chemansky and his volleyball team, they had an impressive start to their season this weekend at the NIU Invitational. Iowa defeated Pacific Saturday afternoon and remained undefeated after beating South Dakota State in three sets. Coach Chemansky was impressed with the team's performance, saying, you can kind of see our team giving the fight and fire that we have been working so hard to achieve during preseason. Jess Janota and Lauren Brooks led the Iowa offense, bringing in 33 kills combined. Sophomore Annika Olson also stepped up, leading the team with 16 digs. The ladies unfortunately finished out the tournament with a loss against the NIU Huskies. NIU started off strong, taking the first two sets, but Iowa fought back, winning the third and giving the Hawks some hope. Things were tied at 20-20 during the fourth set, and then again at 28-28. But the Huskies prevailed and took the win. This loss makes Iowa's record 2-1 for the top of their season. The Iowa women's athletics continued their weekend take over the 17th ranked Iowa field hockey team suited up for the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Saturday proved an exciting day for the team as they defeated number 11 Wake Forest 2-1 in overtime. Freshman McKenna Grew threw in her first collegiate goal of her career during the fifth minute of the game. That goal was followed by the game-winning goal in overtime by junior Stephanie Norlander, giving the Hawks the 2-1 victory. Though the performance was a great start to the season on Saturday, Iowa had a difficult time against number two, North Carolina. It was a tough first half for the Hawkeyes as they went into halftime down 2-0. It was Chandler Akers who scored Iowa's lone goal on a penalty shot in the 37th minute. They had a chance to tie things up, but the Tar Heels kept their lead, winning the game 2-1. The Hawks stay on the road this week as they face off against Richmond on September 4th and James Madison on September 6th. It'll be interesting to watch these teams as the season progresses and they get some home games in here in Iowa City. Stick with us and we'll keep you updated on all the highlights. Brianna and Kelsey, back to you guys at the desk. Thanks guys. An 11-year-old boy from Iceland has made a huge boat out of plastic. Brinjar Carl made a 20-foot long replica of the Titanic using only Legos. With help from his family, he was able to fundraise enough money to buy all the pieces he needed. His Titanic project was inspired by his dream of becoming a cruise captain. In total, he used 56,000 Lego pieces. That's all we have for you tonight on Daily Island TV, so be sure to check us out anytime online at dailyisland.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Can't pick up a copy of the Daily Iowan? Are you worried about how you're going to find out about the latest news in Iowa City and the University of Iowa? Well, look no further. You can download the Daily Iowan mobile app on your iPhone for the area's best news coverage. And you can also read and watch us on your iPad. You can always find current and past Daily Iowan stories at dailyiowan.com. The Daily Iowan is now on TV, online, and in your pocket. If it happens, it's news to us.